Well, hello there. If you're new to fly fishing, I'm gonna show you seven common mistakes somebody new to fly fishing usually makes. And first, let's start off with casting, right? One of the things, and I learned this on some recent tutorials, somebody said, I never thought of that. That's why I've been having so much trouble. When you cast, there needs to be a full length of floating line beyond the tip of your fly rod. As soon as that full length is out, so it's nine or 10 feet, then you can start peeling out some line and start your cast. A lot of new fly casters, when they first start, there's just the tapered leader sticking out the tip of their rod and it makes it really tough to fly fish when you don't have any floating line out. So that's tip number one. Tip number two is that right here on the reel. This is a large arbor, so this is a little more forgiving, but typically the fly line has a memory. So before you start fly fishing and casting, it's a good idea, especially in the winter months, to pull out some line and do a little stretch so you don't have this big coiled mess at your feet before you start fly fishing. That's more susceptible to tangling. So the next thing we're gonna talk about, really, there are numerous things that can go wrong when casting a fly rod. So instead of talking them all about them here, I'm gonna put a video right here. When you're done watching this one, go back and watch this video right here because this is gonna help you cast this thing a whole lot better. I'll give you about 10 different tips to try the next time you go out fly fishing. By the way, if you're finding this helpful, feel free to hit the thumbs up. It's free and it helps this video spread to more people that might benefit from it. And if you feel so inclined, super thanks. It's like tipping your guide and all guides love a tip. And thank you in advance. So the next common mistake is gear. You do get what you're paid for, right? Sunglasses, make sure they're polarized. You want a good lightweight polarized sunglasses. Fly line, if, if you're having, if you're hating life right now, it's probably because you got a crappy fly line. You could spend $50 on a fly reel, but spend the 80 to $100 on the fly line. You're gonna have a much better time of it. I used to use Rio, I've now switched over to Cortland. 100 years of family owned innovation into fly lines. These are great fly lines. Are you still paying attention? You need to, because if you do these things, you can catch fish like this. Oh, it's a good fish. Oh my God, that's a really good fish. Oh, jeez. Oh my God. And that was an amazing fish. Next is the fly rod. If you bought that super expensive combo pack, that's a good way to start out. But again, we circle back to getting what you pay for. Part of the reason why I designed my own fly rod is I wanted to put everything you could find in a thousand dollar rod in a price point under $500. These rods are a cinch to cast and they're affordable comparatively 50 to 60% less than equal level high end brand name rods. And yes, you probably do suck at fly fishing, but so do I on occasion. We all are going to suck at fly fishing on occasion. That's okay. The next thing are waders. Now, this may sound a little self-serving because it probably is, but when I first started out fly fishing, I was going to Kmart and Walmart and I was buying the cheapest, crappiest pair of waders I can get my hands on. And every single year they would leak and I'd go buy another pair and buy another pair. And finally I thought, hmm, maybe if I invested in a good pair of waders, they'll last a long time. I was a Sims fan for well over 15 years and they would last season after season after season. The only challenge with Sims, they can be super expensive and that's why I now wear Drift. Drift gives you the same quality at a much lesser price point. I've been wearing mine, beating the heck out of both my wading pants and my waders for a year now and I've had no problems at all. So invest in waders. You're just, you're gonna thank yourself later by investing in waders. Oh, and be sure to go to my website, fishonrods.com. Join the newsletter. Why do you wanna join the newsletter? You want to because there'll be exclusive deals and exclusive things just for members. And I promise I will not spam you to death. These emails are coming from me, not some bot. It's me, it's coming from me. So the next common mistake is a lot of new fly fishers, as you start tying on new flies, you're using a tapered leader. The further you go up the taper, the thicker the line. There comes a time that eventually you wanna tie on some new tippet to lengthen back out your tapered leader. So in this case, I'm using a nine foot tapered leader. I started getting some wind knots, get rid of those. I started to lose a couple flies and the taper kept getting shorter and getting more and more to the thicker part. So I got on some 4X tippet, I tied a 
double surgeon's knot, which is my preferred knot to tie on tippet to a tapered leader, and lengthened it back out to nine feet. Why is that important? One, you're probably gonna scare the fish away using 20 pound tests unless you're fishing for tarpon or bonefish. And you have to build upon the taper so that the fly rolls over and presents well. If you have a really short taper, it's gonna kind of clunk right on the water. So if you start chopping into your tapered leader, lengthen it back out or put a new one on. Another common mistake new fly fishers make is they hotspot when they go on social media. Now, I know that that might sound hypocritical because at one point it was. So the next common mistake is a big one, a really big one. And fly shops are gonna love me for this because don't just buy one fly, never do that. Never do that because the inevitability is you're gonna catch a really big fish on this fly and you might break it off and you don't have any more flies. I always at least buy flies in pairs, if not triplets or quadruplets. The next biggest mistake is some of you might be tempted to buy a leader straightener. Don't waste your money, use your fingers. The leader straightener, if you put any too much pressure on your line, it just turns it, just completely screws it up and melts it. So use your finger. It works great if you've got a curled line. Just generate a little heat and away it goes. The next big mistake, and I occasionally do this myself even today, is that I don't take the time to unravel a tapered leader. Take the time to carefully unravel a brand new tapered leader when you take it out of the package. Otherwise, you're gonna get your first knot before you even tie it onto your fly line. So take the time to do that. So the next common mistake is that you don't have enough gear. And what I mean by that is that you wanna have enough packages of tapered leader in different sizes in case things change, right? If all of a sudden the fish get really persnickety and you got to put on 5X tippet, if you don't have a 5X tippet or a 5X tapered leader, you're screwed. You're not going to catch any fish. So I always have in my bag 0X, 1X, 2X, 3X, 4X, 5X, and I never use 6X because what's the point? So the next common mistake, and this probably goes more towards the younger generation, a lot of times you guys forget sunscreen. Don't forget sunscreen because when you're my age, you'll be happy that you wear sunscreen because you won't be a wrinkled up old prune. The next common mistake, and this goes for anyone that's fishing a saline lake or salt water, don't leave your gear sitting around. Take the time to wash your gear completely. What I do is take it in the shower, take a shower with my fly rod, peel off all the line, let it fall on the floor where all the soap and stuff is, and reel it back in, rinse everything off. Take the time, even take the reel apart and get inside there if you fish in the salt water. It's super important you maintain your gear. And then maybe put maybe a drop of real oil after you're done. Another big common mistake I see, there are occasions that you're gonna have to carry your rod like this when you're walking down a trail. But if you can, turn it around and carry it like this. Because the inevitability of you stabbing it into something or maybe you get lazy and it's starting to go further and further down and you poke it into the ground, you're gonna break a rod. So make it a habit to carry the rod backwards when you walk down your favorite trail. The next common mistake is that people buy a fly vest <laughs> because they're one of the most uncomfortable things on the planet. What I like to wear is a sling pack. This thing is ergonomic. It's like I'm wearing a backpack. And the difference between a sling pack and a backpack is that I can access things pretty easily right here, nets dangling off. It's just a nice little workstation. If you're wearing a backpack, you gotta take everything off and then dig around in your backpack for your gear. So I found that a bigger sling pack, and I use one from Sims here, I have everything I need in this sling pack and it's easily accessible and it's comfortable when I'm walking down the trails. And typically I forget to do this, but this makes it even better. If you clip this little clip right here. Nice, love it. And the other thing, and I don't know if you guys have witnessed this before. If you hand somebody that's been spin fishing their entire life and you hand them a fly rod and say, yeah, let's fly fish today. And they set the rod on the ground, the reel on the ground and start pulling line out. One of my best friends did that. I handed him a fly rod. He set it on the ground, started pulling line and the reels just jumping on the ground. All right, so do not set this on the ground because it spins when you pull the line out and it's gonna just destroy your reel. So if you're fishing off a beach, don't set it in the sand. If you're putting line on, don't set it on the ground. Put it on something soft in your car, whatever. Just make sure that 
you're on the leeward side if there's any wind so the door doesn't slam on it and break your rod. All right, well, I covered way more than seven things, but hey, hopefully there might be something in there that you might find useful. And if you need a little help with that cast, I'll go ahead and put that video right here and one right here. I'll put two videos up right here. Take the time to watch these videos and I promise you, you'll cast this thing a whole lot better than you are today. All right, everybody, till the next time, fish on.